they, the majority of them get rejected. If you're average attractiveness in online dating, you have to swipe right 200 times to get a single coffee. If you set up five coffees, you'll get one will actually show up Four of the five will ghost you and decide later on, they don't actually want to meet up. So a young man of attractive of average attractiveness in online dating has to swipe right a thousand times. So he gets validation for one coffee. He gets validation that he has no worth to the other sex. He loses confidence. He starts engaging with people because he has less opportunities for random encounters where he has to develop those skills. And slowly but surely he sequesters from society. And at some point, he just is not, not really savable. He just never develops those skills, those skills around friendship or romantic relationships. In the United States, one in seven men doesn't have a single friend, one in four. Listen to this again. Listen to these stats. It's just, just, just fucking terrible. On friendship or romantic relationships. In the United States, one in seven men doesn't have a single friend, one in four, uh, one in four can't name a best friend. In addition, marriage has become now a luxury item. If you're in the upper quartile of income earning households, there's a three in four chance you're going to get married. If you're in the lower quartile, the lowest quartile, there's only a one in, there's a three in four chance you will never get married. So we have a group of the most dangerous person in the world. We're producing millions of them. And that is a lonely, young, broke male. And uh, just bridging into AI, I think the biggest danger in AI that people are worried about it becoming sentient. I don't buy any of that or super weapons. I think that's a problem that we've managed through those things, bioweapons, et cetera, before. I think the biggest problem that AI presents is that Big tech presents a series of low calorie, low risk entry points into what feels like a reasonable facsimile of a relationship. I, I think I'm making friends online, no, you're, but you're not really experiencing friendship. I think I'm in a relationship with somebody. Well, are you, are you really? I'm learning. No, you're not. You're gambling on Coinbase or Robinhood. And rather than endure the rejection and try and develop the skills and make the effort, and it is an effort and involves rejection of going out into the physical world and revealing yourself as someone who would like to be friends with another man, express romantic interest, take those risks, we're developing these digital analogs of life that create low entry, low risk relationships. And then that's why you have this because, dude, I tell you, I just I just made a new uh, dating profile on Bumble just to make sure your boy still got it. And I do. OK, I'm so fucking good at marketing myself on online dating. I am drowning in leads. But one thing I have realized is that like these dating apps, like I'm so glad that Bumble is just doing terrible as a company tinder bumble are they have absolutely ruined the entire dating marketplace for everybody for everybody i have never met a girl in tokyo when i look at her bumble who has not had 50 plus matches on her shit. i have never met a girl in tokyo who has not had 99 plus matches on her tinder they are drowning in an army of super thirsty dudes and I honestly, I feel sorry for these girls to an extent because it's just like you're just swiping through a fucking sea of losers that dudes that are just so thirsty. They have no self-respect. They have no game. They're willing to fucking shell out cash for a complete stranger that they don't even know. And it's just like when they look at dudes like me, when I have like an entry level conversation with them, they just automatically assume that I'm one of these fucking dorks that they deal with because they're just like, well, I'm in a sea of dorks. And it's the same thing for me as a high value guy. When I meet a girl, like when I meet a girl, I'm just like, okay, like what degree of whore is this girl? Like where on like the whore sliding scale is she? Like has she sucked 10 dicks? Has she sucked 15 dicks? Is she 20 plus? Because that's, that's what the average guy is dealing with. And that's why I tell you guys, you got to learn money muscles game frame. So when you do find a good woman, you'd be like, wait a minute, she doesn't have all the symptoms of a whore. This is a good woman. I should lock her down. Okay. Because body count does matter. And there are, there is an expiration date on all of us. And the more you do certain things, the more it's going to fuck you up. Body count, high body count fucks up men too. And a lot of guys in the red pill space don't want to say it because quite frankly, they don't know. They haven't done the research. They haven't read the papers. Okay. Straight up. None of them. Because if they did, they would understand like high body count does affect men too. You do need an exit as a man. You can't just keep doing this shit for the rest of your life and think there's not going to be a fucking psychological repercussion from you engaging in all these short-term flings. And this is a small problem for a small amount of men, but these men are suffering too, right? Because the reality is the problem with what's going on in the entire world is there's just a lack of good women. That's just the bottom line. There is a lack of skinny women who are feminine who are, have low body counts and who want to actually work together with men and, and create something beautiful, which is a life together. That's the ultimate thing. Dude, I don't care what anybody says. When you find a good woman that you love and she loves you and like it's like very evident that you love each other 
And like, there's no like, oh, well, she kind of does this. And I'm like, I don't know if she loves me. She like kind of doesn't text me back. I'm not talking about that. You're dealing with a whore if you have those kind of fucking thoughts, okay? What I'm trying to tell you is like when a man finds a good woman, dude, it is a fucking beautiful thing. It is amazing. I love women. I have dated some amazing women in my life. And I am privileged to do, have experienced that. But I also did the fucking work, okay? You think I just put this shit on the wall and kill myself in the gym and fucking count my calories and put my goddamn food on a fucking scale for YouTube likes and views? No, I'm living this shit. I'm living it. That's what I'm telling you guys. You're miserable. You're addicted to porn. You're going from fucking buy this course, buy this course, buy this course. Don't see anything through. And then you're like, oh, I don't get it. My life is just terrible. I do a free show every fucking Friday since 2019 called Free Consultation Friday, where you can literally pick up the phone and call me and talk to a multi-million dollar earning entrepreneur who has built himself from the ground up to the top 10% at bare minimum in Money Muscles Game and Frame. No, I'm just going to go subscribe to OnlyFans, smoke some weed and play Call of Duty and drink Mountain Dew. Okay, and then you wonder why your life sucks. Your life sucks because of you, man. And that's the thing. That's the beauty of this conversation right now that I can have with you as a man versus a woman. Because a woman would just freak out and be like, oh, I can't lose weight because of my thyroid or my fucking hormones. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're shoveling food in your mouth at midnight. And then you're like, oh, I don't get it. Why am I fat? We live in the most prosperous times in the fucking history of humanity but nobody has a goddamn focus so you're just flailing all over the place and you're like Ugh. you're buying a million things you got like 10 million subscriptions to 10 million things that are pulling money out of your bank account you're fucking chasing whores you're not understanding how to right way to go ahead and seduce women so they come to you so you're not fucking sitting there and you're just like perpetual state of wasting money calories in your life and then you're like i don't get it i'm depressed what's going on i said all that to say this okay the point of this breakdown which i'm doing the entire fucking thing because again you see that's the difference between children and men this needs to be talked about this the full two fucking hours of this needs to be talked about and i'm gonna sit here and see this through because in today's ADD TikTok generation, oh, I don't have the mental stimuli I need. I didn't get it in four seconds. Fuck this. I'm going to give up. You guys don't see things through. It ain't over till it's fucking over. You have to see things through. The majority of people won't sit, th sit down and watch the entirety of this podcast that I'm doing today. And the reality is every little piece of data that you watch from me that I put out is going to get you trending towards where you want to be. Because that's what my fucking business is. It is multiply, mu super fucking successful because I get guys results. That's the bottom line. I'm not cool. I'm not flashy. I'm not fucking, you know, out here bringing on OnlyFans or, or doing crazy light fireworks in my room, reaction, destroying fucking public property kind of shit like the average streamer is doing nowadays. Okay? Because these people are cracked out on dopamine. The reason I'm successful is because I get fucking results. And you're going to see him too in this thing, in this breakdown. He literally starts talking about the solution to this all. And it is literally in order. I kid you fucking not. It is money, muscles, game, and frame, which makes me feel like I don't know if he's stealing my shit or whatever, but we'll see. But you'll see here. Let it, let's just continue.